I'm going to start with is magenta. I use Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. So I'm going to stick some magenta out there. And then um, Titanium White. If you have Wicker White, that works too. Put some there. The brush I'm going to start with is the flat brush, the number 16. How I'm going to double load this brush is um, the side load me method. So I'm putting my brush into the magenta. Then on the side of my white, I'm going to stroke back and forth. Okay, up and over. Now, if you remember, the teardrop first started with a V. Pull this down a little bit here for you. Started with a closed V. And that was at 11 o'clock and that was at 1 o'clock. And then we did that arc. Let me go ahead and paint it for you. We did that. We came up and over and then we came back down, but to a point. Now, if you remember when I used the terminology up and over, that's what we're going to do with this stroke in up and over. But instead of a closed V, we're going to have an open bottom. And the guideline for this is I'm going to do a guideline straight up and down, 6 and, six and uh, 12 o'clock, if this were a clock. Then the width of the stroke is the width of your brush. So we can put a, our chisel edge right there. And then I'm going to put another chisel edge straight up and down, 6 to 12, there. So if you see, it's an H. So that is the guideline for this up and over stroke. I'm going to come back and just get a little bit more paint. Oh, and another thing, let me add floating medium. Floating medium, the fluff of our paint. And a lot of times you need that. Some colors that I definitely need. And then there's some strokes that you definitely need floating medium. Like if you want a really nice smooth stroke, uh, you may need floating medium. Okay, so I got fully loaded paint, put my brush on the left side of the guideline on the chisel edge. I lean toward the middle of the stroke and I lean my brush down and I let the pressure of the white part go up and I go up and over and then I'm coming stroking, I'm getting back over to the other side of the guideline and I stand up. So you can see the difference in our strokes here. Let me do it again for you. It comes up, I let it arc at the top, and then I bring it on down to the, with the guideline and I have that open bottom. This is called, I'll do the H for you again. This is called the up and over stroke. So you can see, depending on the size brush you use, how big your up and over could be. Now that's not to say that if I had, I wanted to make a long or a wide stroke that I couldn't, I can. I can come as far wide as I want. Depends on my design. I could go as short as I want too. But this is the guide for when you're going to make like a rosebud that we tend to make um, with our signature rose the, with all the wiggle leaves. Um, I'll just, we're going to do mostly up and overs today, but while I got this brush, let me just go on the over and down stroke. Because to make a rosebud, you, you need more than this. I'm not doing a rosebud today, but to make one, you need more than this. So where that started, and I'll use my pencil to make a mark. Here is where the top of my brush was when I started the up and over. I'm going to put that point of my brush on that line. I'm going to be on this guideline here. But instead of going up, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down and over and then come right back up to that line. And it makes this what we call a cylinder. And to make a good rosebud, this is the first step. And if you see, I have some pink showing here. So 
I have the dimension. I have the white, the pink, the white, and then the darker pink. So it looks like you can put your brush or your finger in that um, hole, like that cylinder. So that, that's the first step of the rosebud. But what, I, what we needed to do today for the class is to know how to do the up and over. And then I'm going to use this down and over just one or two times today. But there's the, the demonstration for that. While I demo, let me do one other thing to get all the demo part out of the way. I'm going to do an up and over. So there's my H. Now, when I do the down and over, instead of going all the way over to the edge, I'm going to come in and stop like two thirds in. See how it has like a like a little curl look to it. Okay, I'm going to get some more paint. Mostly I'm getting more white, actually. Now for the stroke that we're going to do, I then I did this, and then I'm going to instead of um, continuing to make a rosebud, I'm going to join my brush with this side of the stroke. I'm going to come down and I'm going to slide over and stop about two thirds in. So it made like a little curly cue. Can you all see that? It's, it's pretty cool looking. So we're going to need that stroke today on our camellia. Okay, so that's the demo. I'll leave this here so you all can watch and see that. So I'm my guide uh, for the, my flower, I'm just going to use my yogurt cup. My good, it's a perfect circle for me. Always is a good size for the projects I seem to do. The flower is built with just circles and circles of the up and over stroke. Coming back, getting more paint. I am going to dip a little bit into the floating medium. To use floating medium, what we'll do is with the chisel edge of our brush, we stick it in the, the floating medium there, then come back to our runway and go back and forth. Go back, blend it in good. Now, I won't have to go into the floating medium, maybe for the rest of the flower, but definitely don't do it more than like four or five times. Here's the size of my flower. We're going to now make a series is series of up and over strokes now when you do this here's my up and over you still want to watch out for that pinwheel effect i want all of my up and overs to to go straight out so to to do that easily i'm just going to turn my paper and um, make these little strokes now I made two strokes without getting paint, but and if you notice the white wasn't white, so I, I come I need to come back and get more paint. It's always good for especially these kind of strokes to get paint at every um, after every stroke. I'm just coming around the circle, and I'm touching the side. Of them I'm not overlapping this row just going to go around and I just sort of eyeballing the um, width of my brush but I'm pretty close keep going around the circle here
with these basic strokes, as, as we now know, you can even paint so many more other flowers. Just break, break down the flower and you're going to find, oh, that's a basic stroke that I learned. Okay, still with the number 16, I'm going to make another row of these strokes. Now this row, I want to overlap a little bit. And I'll tell, show you why. I've got a real picture over to, on the side here. I should. Right here. Yeah, I pulled up in a camellia online. And see how it's just rows and rows of these up and over strokes. Now, I noticed they start, they, they, they're overlapping. And we could do our back row overlapping. I just chose not to for this project but I'm going to start overlapping now. So what, what that means is just to have not lines, you know, all these little straight lines within the flower, I'm going to start my U um, or my guidelines in between those two strokes. So then when I do my up and over, it, it so, sort of straddles that those two joints, so to speak. Now, another thing, I got to go back and forth. Now, if you start getting a lot of paint there, go back to your palette and re really go careful and go back and forth and that spread out that paint so you got a you know got a nice chisel edge there. Now, oh, I know what I was going to say. My layers, I'm going to go close to the outside the outside layer. It's not like the rosebud stroke where I left a big gap. I'm really close there. And now this time I'm going to overlap a little bit. So I'm starting my my guide right here. You see I've overlapped right there. So then when I come up, I come out and come down. Um, this part is overlapped and then I'm in between those two. Now you get to a point where you're not going to be in the middle of those prior strokes and that's okay no one's going to be looking and counting and checking where your strokes are they're just going to see the the beautiful arc and the beautiful color of this flower and i'm as you see i'm turning my paper around because i always want to be sure that my stroke is facing outwards not um not angling so I go around like this. Okay. I'll finish this row and then I'll check comments again. But isn't this a pretty color? Um, now in that book, if you should happen to have that book or get that book, the flowers from A to Z, it was painted with the berry with berry wine, which is also a beautiful color in my opinion. Uh, my berry wine was just so dry, it just wasn't working well. So I, I chose um, to go to magenta. Okay, so I'm still on the number 16. I'm going to do one more row. Now this time I'm definitely not going to be able to keep track of where I, where the other row was, but it's. Okay, because no one's going to see that. What they're going to see is these layers of color. So I'm I'll just keep turning the paper. I'm always trying to improve my Facebook Lives. So please, if there's anything that you know that you see that I do that you wish I did better, please let me know. You will not hurt my feelings. I have what they call the tough skin. You have to when you're a senior working in a tech company. <laughs> okay, keep going around. I've just got two more um, strokes here. Now see, like I, I'm almost touching there, so I'm just, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go over that. Okay, so there I got three layers, and that was with the number 16. I'm going to put that aside now, and I'm going to move down to the 
number 12 flat. Let me get that now. So we got the number 12. And as you all know, I'm sure the number is right there on the brush. And these are all the one stroke Donna Dewberry brushes. Now these are the, you know, the green handles, but we have some really the pretty ones of the purple and they're on my desk behind me. I just always forget to pick those up, but I think they would look really pretty on camera. <laughs> okay. So 16, 16, 16, this is a 12 and I am going to now do one layer with this but you know my flower looks a little big so I, I might have to go two layers we'll see and this flower is just like that it, it depends just how how you're painting at that moment there's no uh, right or wrong come across there come back and get more paint And then one more. Okay, so let me just look a second here. Um, do I want to do more? I, I think I'm good with this. Okay, so that was with the number 12, uh, that row. Now I'm going to go into another brush, the number 10. But let me just think a minute here. You know what, Let me, I'm going to do one more row. This this turned out to be a little bigger than my first sample. So let me just do that. So all, that, all I'm going to do is just do one more row using the number 12. Just going around and around doing the same up and over stroke. Now it looks like here I'm getting almost to like the teardrop stroke because I'm in a small area. And chances are, are that's what I'm doing. I'm not being concerned though about the teardrop point because all I'm doing, all I'm concerned about is that smooth outside edge. Okay, so now I'm done with the 12. I'm going to go into my 10. Use my 10 flat and continue to load. I'm use, doing that side loading, getting that nice white edge. Okay. Now this time, I'm down toward the center, the, the center of the flower. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to have my flower uh, sort of go that, face that way. And so down here at the bottom, I'm going to do two up and over strokes. So I'm going to turn my paper around. And I'll do, I'm just going to do two. Because what I do, I want to have another layer showing. And then at this part, I'm going to do that rosebud that um, I showed at the beginning. This, I'm gonna paint one of these with the number 10. So I'm gonna get a, a little bit of white because I really want a nice white. And here's the bottom where I had added those two extra petals. So here's my first stroke, first up and over. See how skinny it is? It's because I have a number 10 brush. Then I'm going to come down and over, stop in the middle, right there. And then I'm going to come here on this side and I'm going to let it swing a little bit, a little bit lower and come on over. So I now have that little uh, really cute curly cue there. Okay, so just a few more steps on this flower. I have the number 10 and I have a little, little space right here. So I know a lot of people can use their number 10 and have success, but I'm going to go into my number six, six flat. I want to add um, two comma strokes here, two white comma strokes. So I, I chose to just go one more smaller. I'm going to get into some white. And I'm fully loading, so I come to the edge here and getting some white paint. 
then I'm going to make two comma strokes. Starting right up here, I touch, lean, and curve and pull. Get a little bit more white. Come, oh, are we fuzzy? Let me um, let the camera focus a minute. Okay, so I made one comma stroke. Let me come back and get more paint because I waited around a little bit. And then I'm going to make one come in the opposite direction. Here, touch, lean, pull, slide over to the end. All right, so isn't that, I, I mean, I'm amazed how pretty this flower is. For foliage, I'm just going to get a, just so the flower doesn't look bare, I added a little bit of uh, thicket. And I'm just going to take my number 10 brush that had the magenta white. I'm just going to add the thicket on the white side, have a touch of that magenta in there. And just so, like I said, just to offset the, the flower like this, I'm just going to throw in some uh, one stroke leaves. So just coming out, push, turn, lift, push, turn, lift, and then pulling your stems in. And then you could make, um, a slight wiggle leaf. The, these leaves are not wiggles with rough edges. They're very uh, smooth type edges. So you could, but you still can offer a little bit of a, uh, wiggle in there to offer interest like that. And then we could just throw in um, maybe a one stroke over here. Ah, a, a grouping. I always like my leaves to be in a group there okay so there's that flower come back to my practice sheet and i'm going to get my get my number 10 brush clean it off and this time on my palette i'm going to add apple red and uh, daffodil yellow Okay, out of the way. And like I said, I have a number 10 flat. So I'm gonna double load with those two colors. Okay, I'm double loading uh, apple red and daffodil yellow. I want more yellow on there. So I think I want more yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the side load method because that way I'll always have a really nice um, yellow. Okay. Now, um, at the beginning, I said we have the smooth up and over, but we also have the roughly up and over. Try to pull this closer, closer, closer. Okay, same concept. I did my chisel edge here. I came across over this way, and then I come up. That's my H. Now, with the up and over, when I come up, and instead of, doing a smooth arc, I'm going to let it ruffle a little bit and slide down. So I come up, let it wiggle a couple of times and come down. So that's that's the U stroke with um, a couple wiggles in there. Okay, so what can I do with this stroke? We can make a magnolia. No, 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 a marigold, marigold. <laughs> You're probably thinking a magnolia. <laughs> marigold is the cute little button flowers so because of that I used my um, bottom of my two ounce paint jar as my pattern so here's here's the flower right here and I'm got the red and the apple red and daffodil yellow same thing I'm going to go around the circle making with this little ruffle up and over type stroke now again turning my paper i can't stress to you how important that is if if you're not at the point where you can paint sideways upside down all that kind of stuff i don't do walls anymore or, you know those kind of things so um i don't worry about that as much like I used to when I first started.
So that said, when I did the oversized canvas cert, oh my, that, that's just like painting on a wall. It, it, it was huge. So I, you did have to sort of contort to reach the, or paint the strokes good, or um, just paint upside down. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm just gonna do two right here. This is a quick little flower because it's a small flower. Okay, row one. Gonna do the same thing, but in the second row. I do start out, you know, um, going be between the two prior strokes, but once I get off, I don't worry about it. And my, my strokes aren't as tight as the camellia was. I'm just only going to do two rows, so, I'm sorry, three rows, so I'm not trying to get up as close as I did with the other one, the other flower that we had today. Just wiggle, wiggle, come down. Wiggle, wiggle, come down. And one more. Wiggle, wiggle, come down. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off because I got a lot of paint on it. This is a small brush. Um, seemed like it gathered quite a bit of paint. So I'm going to stroke side load. Just one more row. And this isn't very, this isn't going to have too many because I'm already at the center of my flower. And I'll probably just have to keep my red end right there at that center. And I believe I'm, we'll do four. Yeah. Turning it around, just get four in there, and one more. Okay, so there you go for the flower. To finish it, get your script liner, not and dampen it. You don't want you don't want it to be wet. So what I did was I stuck it in water in my brush basin, and I just wiped off the excess water there. And then I'm just going to take the green, dip a little bit into the green, and then I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap some green right there. I think it would look nice if I tap some yellow. So let me get, I dipped into the yellow, and then I'll tap a couple of there. Okay, for greenery on this one, uh, I wanna go back to my number 10. I'm sticking with a small brush because it's a small flower. I'm going to get a little bit of thicket, a little bit of yellow here. Okay. I'm going to be painting slider leaves. Slider leaves are a similar are similar to um, one stroke leaves, except that you just don't turn it like push turn lift. These are you just like. Um, you start and then you just slide to the edge without turning your brush. And I, I'll demonstrate that as I paint. But here's my stem. That's gonna be the stem to my flower. And then this is gonna have another big stem like this. And how the leaves are is we're gonna do a series of sliders, slider leaves up this a vein right there, I guess. I'm so I'm holding it here. I'm leaning and letting it slide to a point. These are thin uh, leaves, and it's right next to it on the other side of that. Um, I don't know what that is. It might be, a, I guess it's a stem as well. Come back and get more yellow, and then I'm just gonna I lean it and I let it slide to a point. Whoops, slip floating medium time. Okay. I'll get some more. But these flowers have a lot of, of these stems with these little skinny little leaves. So if we had more time, I, you could paint more on this main stem. But I'm just painting one just so you can see. And I'll show you the picture of from the book. No, that's the end right there. So there, there's our two flowers. Uh, let me get rid of my palette. 
uh, Camellia with the Up and Over, and then um, Marigold with Up and Over with a Ruffle, Ruffle, a Ruffle Edge. <laughs> and let me show you the book out um, from there. Let me hold this up a little bit. Marigold was also in this book. Uh, I need to find, I should have, um, there you go. See, here's the Marigold page. Go up a little higher there. So, so see how you can see how many leaves there are on the on that flower there. 